Welcome everyone. My name is Kelly and I'm the program director for Girl Scouts of Alaska. Today I'm coming to you from my home in Anchorage and we're going to be learning about sewing. Specifically, how to sew on your patches and badges that you've earned throughout your years as Girl Scouts. So to get started, we first want to make sure that we have all of the supplies ready that we'll need. So today I'm using a few different things. First I have scissors. I have some thread, I have needles, and I have my patch that I'm going to sew on. This is my Camp Togo Woods patch, and I have something to sew them on to. You might be using your uh, vest or sash. Today I'm going to use a bag that I'm going to start collecting badges on. So the first step in sewing on your badges to your vest or sash will be to thread your needle. So to do that, I'm going to unwind a bunch of thread. A good length to start with is if you reach out and hold the thread in one hand and bring the spool of thread to your opposite shoulder. That's a good length to start with. You can always add more. So the next step will be to actually thread your needle. This part might be sort of hard to see on the camera, but I'll do my best to show you. So I have the end of my thread and I have my needle. One end of the needle is really sharp. You want to be careful of that end. The other end of the needle has a hole in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully take the piece of my thread and put it through the hole in the needle. If this is a challenge for you, if it's not going through, um, or if the ends of your thread start to get frayed, a good trick is to cut your thread and start with a nice clean edge, or to take a little bit of water and make the edge of your thread wet. That will help all the fibers stick together and help you be able to thread it through easier. So once you have your thread through your needle, you're going to take that thread and double it back so that I have both strands of the thread and I'm going to set the needle side down in front of me. And now I have thread with two layers so it looks a little bit thicker. So I have my ends on one side and the end with the needle on the other. This is where we need to secure these ends together, and to do that, we're going to use an overhand knot. An overhand knot is the most simple knot that you will ever learn. Um, if you tie your shoes, you've probably done an overhand knot before. So to do an overhand knot, you're going to cross your pieces of thread over, so you have an X and a loop and then you're going to tuck your edge into your loop. And that makes a really simple overhand knot. Ideally you want your knot to be pretty close to the end. Mine is about a couple inches away from the end. If it's closer that's fine. If it's a little bit further away that's fine. And then to make it really stay you're going to want to do an overhand knot one more time right over the top of the other one. So again to do that you're going to make your loop, cross over so you have the X, and then tuck underneath and pull that end through. And then ideally your second knot ends up right on top of the first knot. Mine is a little bit off. If it's off it might be a good idea to try a third knot so that you get a knot big enough that it won't pull through. One knot will probably work, but a little bit bigger of a knot will work even better. There you can see it. Now if you found a different knot to use um, or something else works for you, uh, there's no specific knot that you have to use. Nobody's going to see this knot. Um, it's not for safety, so you can be pretty creative and flexible if there's something else that works for you. Alright, the next step 
is deciding where you're going to put your patch. So if you have a badge or a patch that you're sewing on from Girl Scouts, you might want to look and see where those go. So fun patches that you earn go on the back of your sash or vest. Um, badges that have specific requirements that you earn go on the front. And some things like numbers, um, your troop number, have a specific spot on your sash or vest. Um, so take a look um, on the GSUSA website um, for directions on where those go. For me, I'm just sewing my patch onto my bag, and I'd like it to be kind of in the middle of my bag. So I'm going to put my patch on where I think I would like it to be. Some people, when they're starting, will find that using a little bit of tape to tape it in place first while they're sewing will help it stay where they want it to be. So let me move this so you can see it. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that by taking just a little bit of duct tape. This step is totally optional. We're going to remove the duct tape later. Um, but for a lot of girls, it's easier to tape their patch where they want it to be um, while they're working. So I just put a piece of tape double back so it's sticky on this side and it's sticky on the other side, putting it right here. You could also just put a piece of tape over it. We'll take the tape off when we're done or after we've gotten started. So now that we have our patch where we want it to be, the next step will be to get started with sewing. And in hand sewing, there's tons of different kinds of stitches. Lots of them are right. Um, I'm going to show you one way to do it. If you know somebody who does it differently or you find a different stitch that you really like, feel free to use that as well. The most important part is that we're securing the badge to your vest or sash. So it's not important what stitch you use, just that it works for you. So ideally you want all of this tail end and the knot to be inside so it's not shown. So we're going to start by taking our needle and putting it inside of our bag. And I'm going to put it up. I'm going to start in the corner of my badge and I'm going to bring the needle up. Let's see if I can show you right there where my patch will be. So first I'm going to go through my fabric and then I'm going to bring the needle, push it up through my patch. Now again, you want to be careful. Your needle is sharp, um, but it also won't hurt you too bad. So pull that up and you're going to pull your string all the way through. And when you tug on it, you should feel that knot underneath. So that's the first part. Now I pulled it up pretty close to the corner. It's a couple millimeters away. And then when I go back down, this is where you have some choices. So I could go back down really close to where um, I came up. I could also go down outside of the patch and that will make a little bit different of a stitch. So I'm going to do that so you can see what it looks like. So let's see if I can do this so you can see. I think I need a new setup. So there it is. I'm going to go down right here and I'm going to go bring my thread back underneath. So when I did that, hmm, I should have used a bright color thread. All right, so here I have my first stitch. It's right there. I'm using red thread, um, so hopefully you're able to see my stitches a little bit better. Um, you can use any color thread you want. If you use a contrasting color or something that's really different from your patch, it'll show up really well. If you use a color that's really similar, then it'll blend in. So that's up to you. So once I have my first stitch in, I'm gonna bring my needle it's currently in the back here. I'm gonna bring my needle up again through both my fabric and my patch, and I'm gonna bring it up just next to the first stitch that I did. So I'll move over just a little bit, and I'll show you that piece. So 
So now I have my stitch and then a couple millimeters over I have my needle coming up. So I'm going to pull my needle all the way through and then to come back down I'm going to go just through the fabric right on top of where I came up. So now I have two red stitches right there. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to make a bunch more stitches right across the top. All right, this time when I pulled my stitch, I got a little bit of loop of thread there. Sometimes that happens. It's not a big deal. How you fix that is you pull on each of the threads from the back individually, and I just pull them through, and then that will get rid of that loop there. So that happens sometimes when you're hand sewing. So here's where I am with a few stitches in place. And they're not all exactly perfect. They're not all exactly the same length, but they're pretty close. So that's all we're going for here. As you practice more with sewing, things will get straighter and neater, but it all takes practice to get to that point. So right now, as long as it's holding your patch in place, that's a really good place to be. All right, so once you have your stitches going all the way across, you now have a corner. So if you have a circle patch or something without corners, you can just continue to go right around. If you have corners, um, you can do lots of different things. I'm gonna show you one way to go around a corner. So right now I'm finishing my stitch that's near a corner. So I'm going to go through just the fabric here, so I have that stitch. Then I'm going to go up, do my next stitch just like I normally would. Going down through just the fabric. But now I can't go over any farther, I'm at the end. So this time I'm going to put my needle up very close to where I did the last time. And then I'm going to turn my patch and my fabric. And I'm going to go, I'm going to make a right angle with my stitches. And I'm going to go through just the fabric on the next side. So there you can see, we just turn the corner and we're gonna continue on just the way that we've been working. So, sewing takes a little time and patience and it takes a little practice, but it can be really fun to be able to sew on your own patches. Once you've done a whole side or half of your patch or so, the patch is pretty securely in place. So this is the point at which I take that tape off the back. So I get rid of the tape so that it lays nice and flat on the fabric, but now it's not gonna move around on you. So you should be good to go from there. So at this point, we're gonna continue sewing our badge all the way around. Oops. So this time that I put my needle through, it didn't come up where I wanted it to. So because I didn't pull it all the way through, I can just pull that needle back and try again. So I can try as many times as I need to. And now it came up where I want it to be. You might also get to a point where you want to take some stitches out. You can definitely do that. Um, if you need to take stitches out or start over again, um, you can use your scissors to just cut your thread 
and cut any of those stitches that you don't want to be there anymore. If you have a family member who sews a lot or you sew a lot, you might want to invest in one of these. This is a seam ripper. Every seamstress I know, every sewer I know has at least one of these um, and rips out seams a lot. So just because you have to take something out or it doesn't look the way you want, don't give up. Try again. A seam ripper is a great tool for every person who sews. All right, so at this point I've done two sides of my patch. So I have stitches that go along each side. And I also got to a point where I only have mm, probably five inches, six inches of thread left. Um, I could probably do a little bit more, but when you're beginning, don't get down to too little thread at the end. I'm going to show you how you stop with this thread and we start with another one. So my needle right now is on the back side of my fabric. And what I'm going to do, there's again lots of right ways to do this. The way that I like to do this is I take my needle and I go through just the fabric right where my stitches are, not through the patch, just the fabric, and I just go in and back out. So just like that, and I pick up a little bit of fabric and I pull through. And I'm going to do that same thing again. I'm going to start in that same spot so it kind of makes a loop. And this time when I go through, I'm going to pull my needle, but then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to put the needle through the loop that I made. And that's going to kind of tie a little bit of a knot there. And if you want it really secure, you can do it one more time, just like that. So I put my needle through, and then I put my needle through the loop that I made before I pull it all the way through. And that's going to secure your um, thread right there. So then I can just take my scissors, cut off uh, my needle, I'm going to get rid of the short piece of thread, and then I have to go back to threading my needle again. So we'll do that one more time. So again, I take my thread and my needle, and I'm going to just put it through the end. And again, if it's challenging for you, a good way to make it a little bit easier is to make sure you have a really clean end. So cut it again with the scissors or make it a little bit wet um, with a little bit of water. That will help you out as well. So I'm going to just make it from my hand to my shoulder. Whoops, I lost my thread. And I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to do that overhand knot again. So I'm going to cross it over, make that loop, make the X. I'm going to tuck, tuck it through and pull. So it looks just like that. And I'm going to tie a couple of those. And again, if you don't know how to tie an overhand knot, but you know how to tie a different knot, um, go for it. The type of knot is not important. The important part is that um, the thread doesn't pull all the way through your fabric so that it has some place to be anchored. All right, so I have my knots in there. They're really tiny, but they're going to work. And I'm going to just start again. So Whenever you start, you're starting from the back side of the fabric and pushing the needle up through both the fabric and the patch. And if this seems like a lot or you have a lot of patches to sew on, you could also just sew on the corners of your patches um, or just do pieces of them um, so that it goes a little bit faster. Um, your patches will still be secured on your vest or sash. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it. 
I like how this one looks, um, but also just sewing on the corners is totally okay as well. Okay, everyone. So at this point, I've gone almost all the way around my patch. I have just a little space up at this corner for one more stitch and then I'll be done. So I'm going to do that stitch and then I will tie it off on the back just like I did when I was re-threading my needle with more thread and then I'll have a whole patch sewn onto my bag. So I went up through the fabric and the patch and down through just the fabric and now my needle is on the back side and my patch looks really good. On the back side, again, I'm just going to put my needle in and bring it back out without going through the patch at all and pull it through and go again. So into the fabric and back out and then without pulling this whole loop of thread through I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through my loop and that will secure the back and I'm going to do it one more time just so that I make sure that it's really secure so I pull I have a little bit of a loop left I'm going to put my needle through my loop and pull it to secure it off then I cut the extra string, set my needle aside somewhere safe so that it doesn't get poked, and I have my Camp Togo Woods patch all sewn onto my bag. So hopefully you take some time um, to be able to sew your own patches on. And again, don't feel like you have to go all the way around if you want to start by just sewing on the corners or three or four different spots on a circle patch, you can totally do that too. So have fun and enjoy sewing.